soothing story time. Dinner one the emu and Google Gobble the bustard. Dinner one the emu, being the largest bird, was acknowledged as king by the other birds. The Google Gobbles the bustards were jealous of the dinner one. Particularly was Goomble Gubbin, the mother, jealous of the dinner one mother. She would watch with envy the high flight of the dinner ones and their swift running. And she always fancied that the dinner one mother flaunted her superiority in the face for whenever dinner one alighted near Goomble Gubbin after a long high flight she would flap her big wings and begin booing in her pride not the loud booing of the male bird, but a little, triumphant, satisfied booming noise of her own, which never failed to irritate Goomble Gubbon when she heard it. Goomble Gubbon used to wonder how she could put an end to dinner one's supremacy. She decided that she would only be able to do so by injuring her wings and checking her power of flight. But the question that troubled her was how to effect this end. She knew she would gain nothing by having a quarrel with Dinner One and fighting her, for no Goomble Gubbin would stand any chance against the Dinner One. There was evidently nothing to be gained by an open fight. She would have to effect her end by cunning. One day, when Goomble Gubbin saw in the distance Dinner One coming towards her, she squatted down and doubled in her wings in such a way as to look as if she had none. After Dinner One had been talking to her for some time, Goomble Gubbin said, Why do you not imitate me and do without wings? Every bird flies the Dinner Ones to be the king of the birds should do without wings. When all the birds see that I can do without wings, they will think I am the cleverest bird, and they will make a Goomble Gubbin king. But you have wings, said the dinner one. No, I have no wings. And indeed, she looked as if her words were true. So well were her wings hidden as she squatted in the grass. Dinner One went away after a while 
and thought much of what she had heard. She talked it over with her maid, who was as disturbed as she was. They made up their minds that it would never do to let the Goomble Gubbins reign in their stead even if they had to lose their wings to save their kingship. At length, they decided on the sacrifice of their wings. The Dinawan mother showed the example by persuading her mate to cut off hers with a combo or stone tomahawk, and then she did the same to his. As soon as the operations were over, the Dinawan mother lost no time in letting Goombul Gubbin know what they had done. She ran swiftly down to the plain on which she had left Goombulgubbin, and finding her still squatting there, she said, See, I have followed your example. I have now no wings. They are cut off. <laughs> <laughs> Laughed Goombulgubbin, jumping up and dancing round with joy at the success of her plot. As she danced round, she spread out her wings, flapped them, and said, I have taken you in, old stumpy wings. I have my wings yet. You are fine birds, you dinner ones, to be chosen king when you are so easily taken in. <laughs> and laughing derisively, Goombal Gubbin flapped her wings right in front of Dinawan, who rushed towards her to chastise her treachery. But Goombal Gubbin flew away, and alas, the now wingless Dinawan could not follow her. Brooding over her wrongs, Dinawan walked away, vowing she would be revenged. But how? That was the question which she and her mate failed to answer for some time. At length, the Dinawan mother thought of a plan and prepared at once to execute it. She hid all her young dinner ones but two under a big salt bush. Then she walked off to Goomble Gubbins plain with the two young ones following her. As she walked the Marilla Ridge, where her home was, on to the plain, she saw Goombal Gubbin out feeding with her twelve young ones. After exchanging a few remarks in a friendly manner with Goombal Gubbin, she said to her, why do you not imitate me, and only have two children? Twelve are far too many to feed. If you keep so many, they will never grow big birds, like the dinner ones. The food that would make big birds of two would only starve twelve. Goomble Gubbins said nothing, 
but she thought it might be so. It was impossible to deny that the young dinner ones were much bigger than the young Google Gubbins, and discontentedly Google Gubbin walked away, wondering whether the smallness of her young ones was owing to the number of them being so much greater than that of the dinner ones. It would be grand, she thought, to grow as big as the dinner ones, but she remembered the trick she had played on dinner one she thought that perhaps she was being fooled in her turn. She looked back to where the dinner ones fed, and as she saw how much bigger the two young ones were than any of hers, once more mad envy of dinner ones possessed her. She determined she would not be outdone. Rather would she kill all her young ones but two. She said, the dinner ones shall not be the king birds of the plains. The goomble gubbins shall replace them. They shall grow as as the dinner ones, and shall keep their wings and fly, which now the dinner ones cannot do. And straightway the Goomble Gubbin killed all her young ones but two. Then back she came to where the dinner ones were still feeding. When dinner one saw her coming and noticed she had only two young ones with her, she called out, Where are all your young ones? Goomble Gubbin answered, I have killed them and have only two left. Those will have plenty to eat now and will soon grow as big as your young ones. You cruel mother to kill your children. You greedy mother. Why, I have twelve children and I find food for them all. I would not kill one for anything, not even if by so doing I could get back my wings. There is plenty for all. Look at the emu bush, how it covers itself with berries to feed my big family. See how the grasshoppers come hopping round so that we can catch them and fatten on them. But you have only two children. I have twelve. I will go and bring them to show you. Dinner one ran off to her salt bush where she had hidden her ten young ones. Soon she was to be seen coming back, running with her neck stretched forward her head thrown back with pride, and the feathers of her boom-boutella swinging as she ran, booming out the while her queer throat noise, the dinner one song of joy, the pretty soft-looking little ones with their zebra-shaped 
running beside her, whistling their baby dinner one note. When dinner one reached the place where Goombo Goblin was, she stopped her booing and said in a solemn tone, Now you see my words are true. I have twelve young ones, as I said. You can gaze at my loved ones and think of your poor murdered children. And while you do so, I will tell you the fate of your descendants forever. By trickery and deceit, you have lost the dinner ones their wings. And now forevermore, as long as a dinner one has no wings, so long shall a Goomble Goblin lay only two eggs and have only two young ones. We are quits now. You have your wings and I my children. And ever since that time, a dinner one, or emu, has had no wings and a Goomble Goblin or bastard of the plains has laid only two eggs in a season. The end.